Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We're doing another Bible study, Acts chapter 2. If you'd like me to come speak at your church, or if you have any questions, please email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. So we're starting with Acts 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord at one place. And of course, that's an accord. That's a little joke that some pastors say. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues, like, like a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with the other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. So, all of a sudden there was this great mighty wind, and everybody got these tongues of fire. And what the tongues of fire did, is it allowed them to speak in other languages. Now, I don't know exactly if they actually spoke. They, they, they knew, oh, I'm speaking German, I'm speaking Hebrew, I'm speaking Greek, I'm speaking Russian. Or if they just spoke, and when the person heard it, they heard it in their language. But now they're able to speak in uh, multiple tongues. And later it actually lists the, the tongues that they can actually speak. And the reason why God did this is because, if you remember... God told them to go across the whole entire world and preach the gospel and it's hard to go to some, some place that doesn't speak your language so he gave them the gift of, of tongues and they're dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven now when this noise abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language so as these guys are speaking the people heard it in their own language I don't know if it's because it was 12 different people speaking 12 different languages or if there was one person speaking and they heard it in 12 different languages. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not these men who speak Galileans? And how we hear every man in their own tongue wherein we are born. So these guys are shocked. They're like, you know, we all speak different languages. And these guys are Galileans who speak Hebrew or Greek. Why, why, why can't we understand them in our tongue? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Philigra, Famvia, Egypt, and all parts of Libya and Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, and Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak our tongues in the wonderful acts of God. So it actually mentions seven different, 17 different known languages on the um, different different tongues. And so these people were able to hear them in their own language in 17 different languages. Uh, Acts 10 says, While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell upon all them which heard the word. So this is again uh, talking about him speaking in multiple tongues. And in the circumcision that believed they were astonished, and many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles were poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So in Acts 10 it's talking about you know, Peter using this gift to speak to different people. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So he's telling these people, you know, they heard they heard the gospel in their language. They got saved. We know we need to baptize them. Acts 11, 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them as on us in the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For, for as much as God gave them the light, the light gift that he did to us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, which was I that could withstand God. So he's saying, you know, if you remember back in Acts 2, the Holy Ghost fell upon all of them. And, and when these people got saved, they were able to speak t tongues also. Back to Acts 2. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying, no one, saying to one another, what, what is meaning this? And others mocked them, said these men are full of new wine. So some people said, this is amazing, these people are able to speak different languages. And some people said, oh, they're just drunk. That's all it is, they're just drunk. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never uh, known anybody that drinks alcohol and can speak a new language. So, you know, people just, they mocked them. But Peter, standing up with eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as we suppose, seeing as by the third hour of the day. So we say, we're not drunk. It's only nine in the morning. 
You know, it's just, you know, the Holy Ghost came upon us. But this is which spoke by the prophet Joel. And it should come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So they're saying, you know, the prophet Joel said this was going to happen. The Holy Spirit was going to come upon us, but we're going to have all these gifts. And on your servant and your handmaids, I pour out these days of my spirit, that they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapors of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great notable day of the Lord come. And if you guys watch um, my videos on end times, we talk about the sun going dark. So Joel 2, Joel 2, 28 is what it's talking about. And it shall come to pass afterwards, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants and upon the handmaids of those days I will pour out my spirit. Back to Acts 2. And it shall come to pass that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by the midst of all you, yourself and also known. So he's telling these people, you know, all you got to do to be saved is to call upon the name of the Lord. You know, know about Jesus of Nazareth. You know, and that's all you need to do. Him being delivered by the determining counsel for forsaken knowledge of God. <clears throat> for foreknowledge of God. Have you taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain? Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be head of it. So he's telling these people, you guys crucified God. But yet he still loves you and he wants you to get saved. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, and he is on my right hand, that I shall not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will it suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made me known to me the ways of life, and you shall make me my full joy in the countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you the parakeot day. Patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn an oath unto him, at the fruit of his loins according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. Him seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that he that his soul was not left in hell, neither was his flesh to see corruption. This Jesus had God raised up, for we are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received the Father of the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which now ye see and hear. For David is not ascended unto the heavens, but he, shall, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit upon thy right hand, until, until I make thy foes thy footsteps, thy, thy footstools. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked with their heart, and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what should we do? So this guy's talking and he's saying, Listen, God loves you. God was there for you. God walked among you. God did all these things. And you guys crucified him. You guys put him to death. You saw what happened. And God has made Jesus Lord and Christ. And you guys killed him. And the people are just shocked. They said, Yeah, we did some bad stuff. What do we got to do now? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized for every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is upon you and your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall 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 call. So Peter's saying, you got to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And I'm going to go ahead and try to put a little link on top here for um, you have to be baptized to be saved. Because he's telling you, you have to repent, which is turn away from your wicked ways and be baptized for the remission of sins. But in order to be saved, you just got to believe. You got to put Christ first in your life. John 3.15 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to contemn the world, but by the world through him shall be, might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has made not believe the name of the only begotten Son of God. So this is saying you got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and you're going to be saved. But if you don't believe, you're going to be condemned to, condemned to hell. Acts 16, 30 says, And it brought that mountain and said, Sirs, what might I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Back to Acts 2. Remember in 21 it said, And they shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, there's a lot of books out there why I'm not a Campbellite, why I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist, why I'm not a Calvinist. And it talks about how you've got to follow what the Bible says. And these are these these, these um, different religions, and there's more than this. I just picked these three. Um, these are going to basically take you away from Christ, and you don't want that. They're really great books to read. And what many other words did he testify in a short saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. And they, and they that gladly received his word were baptized. The same day they were added unto them about the 3,000 souls. So Peter's telling these people, Jesus came, you guys killed him, you guys need to repent. And over 3,000 of them got saved that day. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And the fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. This is really important right here. If you look at the early church, they said that no matter how much money people had, they all put their money together, and they basically paid for the needy, for the, the widows, for the orphans, for people that, you know, have problems. And that's why if you look at all these different organizations like Samaritan's Purse and Matthew 25 Ministries, almost all of them are Christian based because the Bible tells us as a Christian you need to go out and you need to help those in need. Now there might be some, I don't know, but I've never heard of any you know atheist organizations that go out there and help. I'm not saying that atheists don't help, but I'm saying that as a Christian you are called by God to help the people that are in need. That is your that is your job as a Christian. Obviously, atheists don't believe in that, so that's not their job. Now, I know many atheists that do that do donate money and help out people in need, but there's no that I know of big organizations like Matthew 25 Ministry, Samaritan's Purse, um, the Red Cross, things like that. They go out and they help people in need, and they continue daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, and did eat their meat with gladness and single, singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added the church daily, such should be saved. And, and the interesting thing about this is it says they went to different houses, and they fed people, and it says they ate their meat with gladness. You know, a lot of people go to church and say, okay, well, i got to pay my tithing. You know, here's 20 bucks, and it kind of breaks their heart to do it. You know, oh, i got to pay my tithing, here's 100 bucks. You're supposed to do it with gladness and happiness. You know, I always thought it was interesting that people go to church and they go, oh, I gotta pay this $30. Oh man, this is gonna break my heart. But then they go to the buffet or they go to the you know store and they go, oh, 30, that's all it is, 30 bucks, this is great. And they pay it with no problem. This is you're supposed to give with gladness of heart. And I just wanted to share that. Anyways, guys, that's the video. If you'd like me to come speak at your church, you have any questions, you can email me. You can comment below. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this information. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll put some more videos up here for you to watch. Have a great day.